So, uh, hello, hi. Uh, I'm uh, Nils Wimbald, and uh, well, I put this talk with uh, Hugo Zambi here. Uh, we're both, uh, so I'll talk about uh, using, well, using habits and catalogs for doing things to us. And I'm mostly going to talk because uh, technically it's very difficult to fit everything in one presentation. So I'm mostly I'm going to talk about why we did this, what were our motivations, what uh, led us there, and, uh, and uh, also a bit of, uh, about uh, how we do it <coughs> and present a bit of code we will do in that. So, uh, we both work. Uh, influence. So I'll start by uh, showing what were our motivation for doing graph analysis and what kind of graph analysis we have to do and what kind of needs we were trying to solve with this. Why we used Cascalog to solve our problems or to try to solve our problems. And I'll uh, show a bit about. Uh, more in depth uh, things about Cascade. So, a uh, bit of presentation what we do at Influence. Uh, we are uh, we do a lot of uh, web data mining, and uh, we so we mine data from the web. We have crawlers, we have uh, news aggregators, feeds aggregators. A uh, lot of things. Uh, we also mine things from social networks like uh, Twitter, Facebook, lots, of, lots and lots of data. And uh, we use all this data to build uh, various search engines, which are used by our, by our uh, uh, studies institute uh, <coughs> for uh, doing uh, market research, that kind of thing. So our main, this is important because our main activity is not uh, using big graphs, it's doing this uh, search engine which must run well because that's what feeds us. Uh, and we visualize the data using uh, various means like, uh, so we use, uh, we use Gephi a lot, we also have uh, some uh, custom uh, map <coughs> documentation for example, this is a flash representation of a graph. <coughs> uh, so that's what, where we come from. And so when we do all our data mining, in fact, what we get is, if you want to think in terms of graph, lots of nodes, which can be users, if we are talking about Facebook, Twitter, which can be authors, if we are talking about blogs, we get a lot about get a lot of nodes within the pages. They can also be websites, which are data nodes over pages. And even deeper, they can be words. We're doing semantic analysis, and so we get graphs of columns of words in pages, documents, tweets, okay. And we get lots of edges. Hyperlinks, <coughs> comments, so hyperlinks, uh, one blog links another. One blog has uh, in its uh, blog all another blog, so different kind of links with links with types. One blog made a comment on someone else's blog, different type of uh, link, but it's still an edge. Uh, and on uh, social uh, networks, we get uh, things like uh, retweets, which are links from users to a page, and the sort of links from to a page to a website and uh, we get co-occurrence things between words. So this is very, this is a very heterogeneous kind of data, but uh, we can do a lot of things by putting it all together and trying to apply some thing, some algorithms to that. Uh, and uh, <coughs> well, so uh, all this is interconnected and we can do a lot of things if we don't only look at uh, the graph <coughs> that the caller will uh, <coughs> the web or the graph of uh, Twitter users but we mix it all and use it all together because for example 
uh, LT, per, uh, retweets, deep learnings, comments, low rolls. They are all the same thing, even if they come from very different sources <coughs> and have, a bit, and have a bit different semantics. So, uh, collecting and processing this data as a graph is not the primary goal of our system. <coughs> the primary goal of our system is to have our search engines that run well, don't uh, crash, and uh, that have the data we want in them. But we can do a lot of things with uh, all this data. For example, <coughs> uh, we, we, for example, we, uh, we watch a uh, finite, big but finite list of uh, websites with uh, sufficient uh, authority on the web, and we can use a <coughs> uh, data set to add automatically, or to nearly automatically, site to our corpus, or we can use this to detect uh, new trending topics. So, a lot of things can be done and are very interesting to us as uh, research topics. But they must not collide or intersect <coughs> with our main goal, which is the data goes from the crawler to the search engine, to the index. So, the graph processing should not compromise the rest of the system. Uh, ideally, it should be completely outside the system and uh, should uh, not have any chance to make it crash or make it get late in collecting data or make it slower or anything like that because uh, that would be really bad. Uh, it should be low maintenance, mostly because as we use it for research and not really for production, well, we can't have a lot of admin time uh, on this, so uh, we have to do the monitoring ourselves, that kind of thing, so no big thing difficult to monitor and difficult to do in ourselves. And uh, we don't know what we want to do with it. We have no idea. We have, we have a lot of ideas, but we have no strictly, we, have no, we don't know what field, we don't know what we need, uh, what metadata we need. We don't know a lot of things, so we want to be able to just have an ID and write something and try it and see if it works and if it doesn't work, uh, try something else. So it must be, uh, and as it's something we do, we can't spend days on, it should be quick to write that kind of thing. It shouldn't <coughs> take too much of our time. Uh, so very flexible because uh, we don't, on a tweet, we will store, dump every data we have. On a page, we will store every data we have. We have a lot of data on every page. We know what are the comments, what are the people who wrote something on it. We know a lot of things, but we, we don't know beforehand what we'll need in one year for us. So we, do, we just have, we want to have a system which has no preconception on <coughs> what it's doing. So, now, uh, can talk a bit about what is Cascalog and uh, why we think it solves quite well the constraints I gave in the first part. Uh, so, it's built on top of Hadoop and Cascading and use the bus of these uh, systems for its workflow management. So, I don't know, I suppose most of you know about Hadoop. Uh, so, it's uh, <coughs> distributed. It's a way of doing, uh, it's a uh, Apache project and it's a way to distribu distribute computation uh, on, uh, with MapReduce and lots of uh, nodes. Uh, cascading is perhaps a bit less known, but uh, it's, uh, it adds on top of Hadoop a lot of very interesting things uh, to do workflow management and ease uh, uh, writing uh, Hadoop jobs. And it's, uh, Java data project. Uh, one, another, one other thing about Cascade is it's inspired by the Datalog for its syntax. <coughs> Datalog, I think we are going to a lot less known territory. Uh, Datalog was quite uh, right a bit of time ago and it's a subset of Prolog which is used to do database queries. Uh, and uh, as a subset of product, uh, some interesting uh, uh, 
character properties uh, which, which we can uh, use for our query. Uh, it's, um, it's been used a lot uh, for uh, database a while back and uh, we think it's quite a good fit for queries on graphs. And at last, uh, Cascalog is uh, hosted on the uh, Java virtual machine by the Clojure language. So, one big advantage of the Cascalog when compared to some things that are similar, like uh, Hive or Big, is that it's a full language. <coughs> you get access to everything you could do in uh, Java. It's not a small domain specific language like SQL. Uh, in which you can only do some, only do some types of uh, operations and need to have external dependencies <coughs> to add uh, to add the uh, logic to what you're doing inside Hadoop. Here, everything can be done inside. So, Hadoop, why does it uh, solve our need? It's rela reliable and it's scalable. So it's reliable. You don't need to monitor it uh, too much. Uh, if you don't. Uh, don't do too many bad things, it shouldn't, it does its job uh, alone and well. Uh, and it's scalable, which is important because uh, right now we are using it uh, for, we need to be able to add processing power if we are doing something that's, um, for example, we have more than four years of uh, data archive, and if we want to do big jobs on uh, four years of uh, data, well, we need more power. So we need to be able to scale it quickly, but only for a finite period of time, and then scale it back because it's, we did the, the queries we wanted, and perhaps nothing. We, we will think about it for one month, and do nothing gets with it. Uh, one big, big, big uh, advantage for us was uh, the fact that it's only text files, and text files won't crash <coughs> systems if you have enough space on your disk. So we actually, everything we store, we use on, uh, uh, everything we use in uh, <coughs> Cascalog, we dump in uh, big log text files. Uh, we reused our existing uh, syslog infrastructure, so everything is centralized, we didn't need to implement something new, we can just uh, send the data all day long inside syslog and at the end of the day we have a phone job that dumps everything into Hadoop and uh, as it's completely outside uh, it's only log statements inside our system where we don't have any problem like perhaps we are, if we would be if you would uh, dump it in the database and the database would become slow then perhaps all the system gets slow or perhaps the database crashes and we have errors, that kind of thing here. The, thing, the worst thing that can happen is yes, we lose some data because the syslog is full or something like that. And as it's not uh, really critical uh, <coughs> to our infrastructure, it's not a big problem. And we can reuse existing Hadoop instances of our system, which was also very important because uh, we use or we already use Hadoop for uh, log processing, that kind of thing. So we already had everything we needed to <coughs> do what we wanted on graph in our uh, in our system. So we could uh, directly reuse them and uh, add uh, almost uh, add only f a few uh, maintenance tasks to the admin team. Uh, we also could uh, we use. Uh, our existing knowledge of Hadoop, which is not something new. And we have no need to know beforehand about what fields should be indexed because we will be querying on them. We uh, don't uh, need to know, uh, we don't need to have perfectly uniform data format, which we don't have anyway because uh, our extraction uh, algorithms uh, changed a lot uh, during uh, four years. So we have very, very, very different type of data on every page, uh, depending on which period we are, we are using. And thanks to very free form format, it's not really a problem. We can just use what we have 
and compensate what we don't have, and we we have good chance to be future proof in what we're doing. So data log, data log for rapid prototyping. This solves the problem of uh, being able to write very quickly our queries uh, and not uh, think too much about it or have something that actually looks a lot like what you can do if you have a big data set on the, on the SQL <coughs> database, relational database, and just try things, uh, count things, that kind of thing without really uh, <coughs> having to know exactly what you want to do, where are your index. So datalog is a subset of prolog. So prolog, I don't know if most of you know about uh, prolog, or language. Uh, very don't, most famous logical uh, programming language. And uh, it has a few very interesting uh, characteristics. First, it's uh, completely declarative language. So you have a new uh, only state Uh, so, one of the 
big advantage it's only one language one language for the query one language for the business logic behind and it's only one file so you don't have for example like, like what you have with pig which is you have a very nice language to do your query but if you need some specific logic then you compile the java class uh, on the side and you call it and you have two you have two things and when you're doing rapid prototyping i think this is something a bit a bit of a it's a bit of a burden uh, you don't get uh, to write one <coughs> very messy perhaps but one file which has everything in it and you run it and you see what happens it's, uh, and you can share it for example with someone else on your team and, doesn't need a lot of to know about the dependency and that thing. So it's, uh, it's a good fit for the kind of thing we want to do, which is, uh, again, uh, explore, try to find new uses for our data. Uh, so one other thing that's very interesting is as it's a uh, full-featured language, that's completely un unrelated to data processing are possible inside the, query, the queries themselves. So use, for example, the Hadoop, uh, use a Hadoop to get distributed on uh, a lot of uh, <coughs> nodes. And uh, one very good example of this is, for example, uh, solving shorter things. Uh, as I said, we do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, captation on uh, social networks, also on the web, and a lot of links are just uh, bitly links, so you can't really uh, see where they lead uh, and uh, do jumps on them uh, efficiently if you don't uh, resolve them. Uh, with closure, you can, inside your Cascalog query, do a head on the bitly URL, see where it leads, and uh, use that to do your join. So you're not, you don't have to do it beforehand with a script. Uh, you can change how you do it. You don't need to store the result link inside your data. A lot of things like that. And you can, you, we have, we already have, of course, a lot of this. We do a lot of <coughs> that kind of thing. You can reuse them directly. You don't need to write again anything. And uh, it allows uh, complex algorithms to be rather consistently uh, expressed. So again, it's a matter of uh, perception and opinion. But uh, once you once you get the hang of it, it's a very nice language to, to write uh, graph algorithms. And if we have some time at the end, I can show you some uh, things like uh, component detections or hate drunk. Uh, and which are rather short and easy to follow. Some downsides. Uh, this is slow. I mean, uh, you're, uh, if you compare it to just taking your graph, put it, put it in your memory using boost, that kind of thing, on one machine doing things, it's very, very slow. Uh, you get scalability, but not, uh, but not, not very fast. And it's also slow when compared to something like Neo4j uh, on one uh, machine because you get the joins uh, in, uh, in Hadoop uh, are costly and so you get scalability but not really a, a very uh, fast way of doing <coughs> things. So this is not a good solution to do things like uh, having an API and doing a request and sending answers uh, to your client. It's not like that. If you want to do that, you preprocess things with that and then you store answers somewhere and you just send the answers. So you, you need to preprocess things. You can't do it real time. Uh, it's not a problem for us because, as we said, uh, we use it for uh, analysis and. Uh, uh, Updating things in our uh, in our different parts of our engine, but this is something that can wait. We anyway we only use it once a day, perhaps to compute things. So we had no we we had that kind of uh, constraints, and you cannot do real time, which means that it's uh, you can't really. It's not very easy, and it's not very. Uh, 
it's not a good idea anyway to write uh, links, for example, one at a time every time you get uh, you <coughs> call them, to write them directly in Hadoop and try to do things. It's not used like that, so you just uh, buffer everything that happens and then send it in one big chunk in your Hadoop uh, cluster and compute things on that map, but you don't, do, it's not uh, very good to do things like real time updating of scores or that kind of thing. Again, it was not, uh, this was not our <coughs> aim at all. So that wasn't a problem. Uh, what, um, however, you can uh, do things like, uh, and I, well, I talk about it a bit now. Um, you can mix the different approaches. You can have graphs to get what you want. So uh, what we use it for, uh, some people have other uses, but uh, post-processing on, uh, on large number of edges, for example, uh, computing uh, evolution of page rank on a uh, big period of time of some websites on our data set, that kind of thing. Uh, we don't need to answer fast, we, and we need uh, to be able to build something that will allow us to have a bit of flexibility on uh, what will be, uh, what format the uh, URLs will be, uh, what uh, kind of uh, metadata we have. We, you can use it if you have uh, real time uh, or uh, specific needs. You can use uh, Cascade as a first line of uh, attack and then use something else as well, so something we do. We, you can use uh, Cascalog to do filtering or trans transforming a data set before exporting it to something which uh, will uh, allow you to do what you want. So we do, for example, we do a lot of things with uh, processing a data set, then sending a smaller data set to Jeffy for visualization. Or uh, again, uh, doing some kind of uh, interesting sampling on a big uh, data set and sending that to a new project and then using new project to do a request in real time. So it allows you, it allows us to, uh, perhaps we could, uh, well, with Jeffy, we couldn't uh, send our whole graph inside this. It's something there would be no way. With Neo4j, perhaps we could scale Neo4j to. The, to our need, but it would be difficult uh, <coughs> from an uh, admin point of view. And by doing a lot of uh, sampling, a lot of filtering before and transforming the graph by projecting it, that kind of thing, we can uh, have a nice small database that fits well on one uh, of our uh, servers. Uh, we also can also use it to back process all data with its consistent fields and merge it to data sets and merge different data sets so that's what I uh, said before uh, you get uh, graphs with different type of nodes different types of links but you want to join them together and uh, this uh, is this allows you to be very flexible for that kind of uh, processing, you don't have to design a schema or to think about even what you will index. So, now, I hope I've uh, convinced you that uh, something like Cascadot can solve uh, some of the problems you may have or can have its place on the uh, processing uh, uh, using graph. Uh, so a few things about, I, I only say a few things about the catalog and then directly show you examples of very simple, of very simple things and comment heavily on them. Uh, so catalog has a declarative syntax for making queries. So um, no instructions, you only specify constraints and uh, give facts what we call facts in data log to the engine and uh, infer what, uh, what is the result of your uh, query. The order of statements in a cascalog, uh, in cascalog is uh, arbitrary and in data log. So this is a nice property, property because you can um, 
I'll show you later, but you can uh, easily, for example, write DSL above it or write a uh, web form to add the constraint. And it's not like you're uh, trying to uh, concatenate uh, strings together. In, for example, if you need uh, to have a non dev doing creating that kind of job, it's easy to generate a cascalog uh, query because you don't have to mind about uh, where should the group go, where should the filtering go, in which order, that kind of thing. Every st the order statement is completely arbitrary. You don't, uh, and the syntax is this like, which can be seen as advantage or not. Uh, operations are based on tuples, so if <coughs> Cascalog doesn't really insulate you completely from knowing what a loop does. Uh, you could uh, use uh, Cascalog without thinking at all about uh, what is what a loop does with what you've uh, written, but you get very inefficient uh, code. So <coughs> not really, not really a good thing. So if you want to use that, you have to know a bit about MapReduce, uh, having perhaps. Uh, uh, already having written one or two jobs, that kind of thing. You don't need to be an expert, but you need to know what happens on the map side of the computation, what happens on the review side, and uh, why it's better than it happens on the map side, kind of thing. Uh, and this is useful because then you can control the flow uh, with uh, custom operators. Uh, which is uh, which allows you mostly to optimize what's done, so you can give more facts to the to the query engine, and he will be able to some jump that would be usually with an aggregation that could be done on the review side would be moved to the map side of the map reduce job, and you'll get a much better uh, parallelism. So it's interesting to know what happens. You you get a lot of uh, control about what is really done if you need it. You can, uh, you can optimize uh, what happens uh, and uh, get uh, queries that are uh, very competitive with what you would have done if you had uh, written in, perhaps not in directly in Java, in Java but uh, with what you would have written in this big or high. So, here, some code. <laughs> Uh, very simple, um, very simple query, very simple operation, <coughs> but one that we do all the time uh, on our uh, data set, an aggregation. Uh, we compute the integrity of a node, uh, and it's actually uh, uh, two functions that uh, exist in Cascade Graph Core that we wrote. So <coughs> Uh, it's not. Uh, it's a true example that you like that. It's not something that's more adapted to fit on one side. Uh, I will comment each, perhaps each line uh, in order. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, and first word. So it's a list. The function name is the first uh, word after the parentheses, <coughs> and all the other names, all the other things are just arguments. Uh, defend is just the way in closure in which you would define the function. So we define a function that's called in degree. Uh, and it's just a completely uh, normal uh, closure function. You can do everything with it in the closure function. Then there's a doc string, uh, which is just like Python, the foundation. The edges between brackets is the signature of the function, so it takes one parameter, it's called edges, it's called edges, uh, and which is a cascalog generator. So it can be, it can be, for example, directly the files you write from HDFS, it can also be a subquery, you compute it beforehand, and it can be some things that you have in memory on the on the computer and that will be read directly. So any source of topic for your computation. Uh, the strange code <coughs> and the is uh, just a way to specify that you are uh, writing that this is uh, a micro uh, to specify that this is the cascade uh, query you're writing and to generate uh, 
Then the new thing inside vector is what is the return of uh, your uh, query. So here we return two things: destination, which is the ID of the more specifically here the link, the web address of the node, and in degree. So we get a nice uh, token tuples with two, two fields and uh, exactly what we want. Edges. Edges are tuples. So edges, it's a generator we passed in the function and uh, it consists in tuples of two fields, uh, destination and source. We don't need source, so it's just an underscore. And for this computation, the source of the link isn't important. What we want is only the destination of the link to do an aggregation on it. Uh, for example, if we, when we compute the page rank, we need both uh, distinct faults to allow us to count things without uh, uh, doing the distinct before, distinct being uh, default uh, behavior of Cascalog. And, so, and then we just use count, which is a function in the core Cascalog uh, library and we affect it to the degree. What's interesting is that we've never said what we are counting. That's where Cascalog uh, shines. Uh, the aggregation is inferred by the engine because we can only count on destination. As it's only, uh, the only uh, variable that we use from our generator. So the count is done on the number of links that have been the same destination and uh, stored in degree, in, in degree and uh, affected to each destination. So it's a bit... Uh, uh, it's a, you have... There's a bit of a high learning curve to do things like that, but once you get it, uh, it's it's a very thin and uh, very, uh, uh, very nice way to write things. And that kind of uh, uh, queries is actually we do a lot, a lot, a lot of that and things not, not <coughs> complicated. So it's quite nice that it fits on one slide and can be written very quickly. If we change the format, it can be easily adapted to. <coughs> Uh, something a bit, uh, <coughs> a bit different, some filtering on uh, our tuples. So here, again, uh, we define a function for the filter nodes. It also takes a generator for LG, but also a threshold. Uh, it uses <coughs> our former uh, query to <coughs> compute in degrees on our edges, so this let is just uh, affects uh, in degree the result of this subquery to in degree, and the in degree is a new generator we can use in our new query, we will filter it, uh, and this is quite a nice way, by the way, to reuse uh, previous, uh, previous code. Uh, so here we will get again node ID in degree, and uh, <coughs> Here is where the filtering is happening. We just want to uh, in degree uh, uh, be uh, more than the threshold we gave. And here we do exactly what we did uh, uh, in our previous uh, uh, slide, which is uh, deconstruct our generator inside in the uh, constituent tuple fields. So no ID in degree. That's what we. That's what. Uh, that was what the written type of uh, we was. Uh, here we also uh, illustrate uh, what I said before about uh, the arbitrary order of the constraints in Pascal because we never talked about in degree before here, and we do the filtering operation before doing the before creating the field. So uh, probably I wouldn't write it like that in real code, but it just shows that you can do it. Uh, you 
can do it and it still works. And that's quite interesting if you, uh, for example, building this kind of uh, queries uh, from uh, user input in a, in a web form, they can just uh, specify things as a threshold over five, give a lot of constraints, and you just uh, generate very short statements and put them in any order in your query. And uh, the inference uh, engine uh, does this thing and you get what you want. So, so that's quite nice. We didn't really uh, use that uh, for now because uh, yeah, only the dev are writing queries. So that kind of flexibility, but it may be useful one day. Yeah. Okay, so quicker. <laughs> uh, under the hood, this happens. That's just an example. Uh, I won't explain it then. That's just an example of uh, the fact that in this precise case, the Cascalog has optimized what we did to create a filter hop with the result. We could write the previous slide exactly like that. <coughs> a bit uh, longer, but it was the same. And in some ca case, you have to use this kind of custom operation, filter of aggregation of, to optimize what is being done in your query. Uh, so I won't go in there. Uh, on this side, it's a join. Uh, so, uh, for example, what we do when we merge Twitter, retweets from Twitter and uh, backends from logs, uh, and it illustrates a few good things. For example, uh, you have uh, so you have two generators as parameters of this function: one that uh, takes the file of backends, one that takes the file of the retweets. We only uh, throw, uh, we uh, give back the result, uh, the links. Here we see that the backends is. Uh, the source URL and the target URL. Retweet is a uh, user ID and the target URL. We don't care about the user ID for now. And get website is just a normal uh, cascalog function. It's written. Uh, th this can be used in any other. Uh, it's not linked in any way to cascalog. It can come from, a, can come from another <coughs> module. It can also be a Java function we call directly inside our query. Here it just, uh, uh, just gets the host of the URL to be able to uh, have a graph of websites and a graph of uh, it's a very simple and one way to get a graph of websites still. And it allows you to, have, uh, to get back the site website URL, not the page URL. But it illustrates that it can be very done very easily. Uh, and you get so a list of uh, result URL which you can count for example later on and you get scores. So, uh, further reading, uh, first the Cascalog home, uh, project on GitHub. Uh, it's actually quite well documented with quite an active uh, community and the uh, user group. So very interesting to join the user group and see what uh, happens and if you have uh, questions. Uh, people are very friendly. Uh, and if you, so I hope that I would have some time to do that, but uh, no. So if you want to see more advanced use, because this was, uh, this was, uh, I showed you things that you can use uh, on that are interesting in themselves, but not very interesting. But we have written, uh, this is our uh, Cascalog country for using Cascalog to do graph computation. This is uh, the branch on our GitHub account. And you'll see things like uh, how to compute page rank and uh, component uh, detection using triangle of nodes. So more interesting thing, things that can that you can use directly or that can get you started in the right direction if you want to use it. And if you like this kind of problems and things, we are highly so And uh, so yeah, thanks. Oh, well, it depends on exactly what we are working. A lot of the time, it's not 
we have some very big uh, in the UK, uh, in our <coughs> type, 